Hello, my name's Ian Campbell from Beaker Valley Shire Council. Thanks so much for joining us on this special Friday evening. I'm here on Ewan Country on the far south coast of New South Wales and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Welcome to the Bega Valley Regional Gallery for the opening of the Shirley Hannan National Portrait Award. The Shirley Hannan has a very special place in the heart and soul of the Bega Valley. Normally, this place, the Regional Gallery, would be shoulder to shoulder with people, sipping champagne and arguing over the judge's decision. It's an event that brings this place together, this community together. It makes us feel good. It teaches us something new and it reminds us of the importance of colour and stories in our everyday life. That's still the case this year. We aren't shoulder to shoulder in the gallery looking at all the portraits, but that's still very much the case this year. The Shirley Hannon brings us together once again in 2020, but in a COVID safe environment, of course. Thank you so much for joining us and making this part of your Friday night. Tonight, we'll hear from this year's judge, Karen Quinlan, the director of the National Portrait Gallery in Canberra, and we'll also connect with the winning artist. All 38 of our finalists are tuned in and on the edge of their seat. $50,000 is on the line. Life-changing on a good day, let alone these funny times that we all share together. But first, let's go next door into the exhibition space, into the Bega Valley Regional Gallery. Bega Valley Mayor Sharon Tapscott is waiting for us alongside Gallery Director Ian Dawson. Mayor Sharon Tapscott, Ian Dawson, Gallery Director, thank you so much for your time. What a great exhibition, what a, a great occasion for the Bega Valley once again. Sharon, you're one of the few people who've had a look around the Shirley Hannon so far. What do you make of it? Oh, it's, it's just amazing, absolutely amazing. And all 38 entries are, you know, they're gobsmacking, really. They're, um, each one of them in their own way has got something unique to offer. And it is truly amazing exhibition. But I too would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the um, lands and waters on which we meet and pay my respects to the elders past and present and forever thankful that we, let, we meet on this land here in this beautiful gallery. Ian, you really steer this conversation. As I say, it's part of the heart and soul of the Bega Valley. You steer this exhibition every two years. Give us a sense of the history around the Shirley Hannon. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, look, it's, it's more than just putting paintings on the wall, I think. It's about uh, showcasing some amazing talents from across the country. And I'm really thrilled that we had entries from every single state and territory uh, into the prize this year. Um, we've had to narrow it down to 38, unfortunately. But look, it's it's a real chance for us to be involved in a national conversation and for us to showcase these incredibly talented artists here in the Bega Valley. Ian, I never got to meet Shirley Hannon. I certainly know members of her family, Peter Hannon, for instance, and Lisa Herbert, her, her niece, who's here tonight in the gallery. Tell us a little bit about Shirley. Who was Shirley Hannon? Well, Shirley um, moved to the area and raised her children here. She was a long-term resident and she took up painting later in her life. Um, she was really interested in uh, realistic portraiture, which is, uh, you know, what we have in the Shirley Hannon Prize today. That's our niche, our unique selling point. Um, she, we have amazing works in our collection of Shirley's, the realistic portraits she did of local people, but also people that she found on her travels. Uh, and yeah, the, the prize was established in the early 2000s and we're coming up to the, I think the 12th edition of it this year. Sharon, the Shirley Hannon and indeed the Bega Valley Regional Gallery adds something really rich and dynamic to the culture of our community, but also the tourism offering, our economy as well. This is a special place for all sorts of reasons. Yes, it's a, it's a special place for not just our residents, but we do have a lot of tourists who come through here. And the Shirley Hannon um, Portraiture uh, Prize is becoming quite, in, uh, quite nationally known. So it does attract a lot of interest and attracts a lot of people to this gallery and not just the residents. But we also must acknowledge the great generosity of the Hannon family in contributing to this prize each year and making sure that it goes on from strength to strength. 
Sharon, give us a sense where the plans are up to for the, the big new gallery, the big new Bega Valley Regional Gallery. Um, there's money that's been uh, committed to it. Plans are progressing. Where are things at? Well, yes, there is a concept design, as far as I'm aware. Um, we're staying in the same footprint but expanding. Uh, it's absolutely necessary. Ian has done such a marvellous job of selling the uh, concept to, of a, a regional gallery to not only the councillors but also to the state government. And we're looking forward to getting extra funding. We already have a significant amount of funding. We're looking forward to getting extra funding so that we can start on this project as soon as possible and have it finished before the next Shirley Hannon portraiture um, award comes around, which is in two years. Ian, the other talking point about the Shirley Hannon in 2020 will not only be the portraits that are hanging on the wall, but the reinvention that you've done with the gallery space. What have you done? People watching this video will be looking at the ceiling, will be looking at the floor. You've really given this place a makeover. What have well, you done? We like to keep things fresh around here, Ian, as you know. Um, we were very lucky to receive a federal grant um, through the last local member, the local federal member, uh, who allowed us to uh, rip up our 30-year-old carpet and reveal this gorgeous polished concrete underneath. We've also taken out the ceiling just to show, I suppose, a bit of a deconstructed view. It's a bit of an aesthetic choice. But we wanted to also kind of acknowledge that we will be moving on from this space as well. And it's a bit of a symbol that we're ready to, you know, flower out into a larger and more purpose-built space. Ian, you're on mute. We've lost your sound, Ian Campbell. Sorry. That is the saying of 2020, isn't it? You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying while I was on mute, and in just a moment, we'll hear from Karen Quinlan, our judge for the Shirley Hannah National Portrait Prize. Karen is also the director of the National Portrait Gallery in Canberra. Ian, as you make your way around this year's exhibition, the 30 final, 38 finalists that hang on the wall, Bruce Pascoe, uh, well-known local face, well-known local Ewan elder is, is behind you. What do you notice about this year's exhibition? Uh, look, it was really fantastic going through the uh, entries with our panel and we noticed there was a huge amount of self-portraits this year. Understandably, people have had to work with what they've got in lockdown over the first part of the year and so we had a lot of self-portraits come through. Uh, a lot of portraits of family members as well. But look, I think it's a really nice mix this year of, of distinguished Australians, um, really... Uh, you know, fascinating stories behind a lot of, of the portraits, but also just soft and um, close and intimate portraits of uh, the artist's loved ones as well, and a lot of self-portraits. We'll let you know how you can explore the Shirley Hannon National Portrait Award in just a moment. You can do it virtually and you can do it in the flesh as well. The gallery will be open tomorrow for you to come in and have a look at these amazing portraits. Ian, uh, Sharon, we'll come back to you again shortly, but first let's catch up with the judge in this year's Shirley Hannon, Karen Quinlan AM, who is the director of the National Portrait Gallery in Canberra. The Shirley Hannon really is this region's premier art event, but it also has national significance and weight. It sits alongside the Archibald, the Darling and the Wynn Art Prizes. 250 entries this year, as Ian mentioned earlier, 38 finalists have been selected. And Karen, you had the job of selecting the winner. Does that role of being an, a judge in a competition like this, in an art prize like this, sit comfortably with you? Yes, um, I'm surrounded by portraiture, so I love actually looking at shortlisted exhibitions of portraits. And so, yeah, it's always a challenge doing the judging on your own because you don't have anyone to talk to. But uh, I was really excited when I was approached and really delighted to be involved in this one. As you say, you spend your day with portraits at the National Portrait Gallery in Canberra. Does that make it easier for you to, to judge the Shirley Hannon or does that make it harder for for the artists i don't know um it's they're not hard to judge i think you have a, a real sense of uh what's in the room as soon as you walk through very quickly i can't walk through the room here so uh, you know it's very much about doing it online so it's sort of a little bit difficult in that sense however i i can imagine 
that just seeing the view of the exhibition previously, you know, it's, it looks like a great hang and the works really speak for themselves. It's a strong collection um, and, you know, 38 works to choose from. It was, it was quite straightforward, um, I found. So there can only be one winner. Um, but certainly there were a few that were I could highly recommend as well. Um, so, yeah, it's a great task. And, again, I'm really, really delighted to be involved. We'll get your big announcement and chat about some of the portraits that caught your eye in, in just a moment. But in terms of the process that you go through, is it about that initial reaction? I know when I walked into the gallery this week and Ian and his team were, were hanging the artwork, I had that immediate reaction. Is that something that you look for as well when you judge? I do when I'm able to walk through and as I, I sort of said, I can't do that. So I sort of looked at them on the screen. Um, I, you go through all of them, really one, one to 38 and, you know, a few stand out just the way when you walk through an exhibition, you stop and you, you take a longer look. I gave them all the same amount of time. Uh, I read all the statements. Um, I read all the biographies. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a different sort of a, a approach, I suppose. But the same results, there's always a few that sort of stand out and you, from the shortlist, you make a shortlist and from that you, you get down to one or two and then you, you, you finally come to terms with what, what the, the difference is or, or where the, the sort of extra interest is for you and, and then you pick the work. So that's how it happens. <laughs> Are you doing this around your own arts practice uh, as well you're the, the director of the, the national portrait gallery you artistic your, yourself outside of that work oh really <laughs> i've been asked that question for a long time um i did go to art school and i did learn to paint so i have had i do have a practical uh background but not for a very long time i'm very much uh, a person who, who looks at the art and tries to understand what the artist is is saying so uh no not a practicing artist myself and tell me, Ian touched on it before, perhaps the subtle influence of these crazy days that we live in, in, in this year's exhibition, the, the influence of COVID-19, the influ influence of, of isolation, but also, I guess, the, the joy of art also in this time. Did you get a sense of that as you look through the, the 38 finalists? Well, I thought the, the comment about the self-portraiture was interesting because I found that has sort of occurred in other prizes uh, recently. I think it's a really tough time for artists and uh, not being able to even probably leave your studio, uh, but being able to connect with sitters, um, being in the same space as a sitter, being, you know, equal, the proper distance apart from the sitter, all of those things are quite challenging. So I feel for artists and I think it's just a great effort that all of these artists entered and uh, I congratulate them because they made it this group made it into into the shortlist and the others that didn't I still congratulate them for you know putting up the work for, for scrutiny it's not an easy process and um, you know I think it's very brave to do it and uh, you know I just wish everyone the best really with their careers. Karen I think the time has come. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who is the winner of the 2020 Shirley Hannan National Portrait Award? Okay, well, the winning artist is Cameron Richard for his portrait of Miss Primkuma. I think that's how I pronounce it. Um, so congratulations to Cameron Richards, whom I can see is in shock. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. What the hell? Cameron. Thank you so much. Hey, hey, the winner of the 2020 National Portrait Prize, the Shirley Hannon, $50,000. Not a bad day at work. <laughs> oh my god thank you so much i cannot believe that cameron um, we'll come back i'm keen to know a bit more about you and the the lady that you feature in your winning artwork and we'll take a look at that winning artwork in just a moment but karen what is it about cameron's work that caught your eye well if i look at the the statement written by the artist i'm sure cameron will be able to speak to this better than i will but Priya fled northern Sri Lanka to provide, um, her parents fled uh, northern Sri Lanka to provide uh, a safe place for her to live in Australia and she was born in Australia. So um, the artists really captured, uh, I think, uh, a great portrait. It, it should sort of reflects upon two different worlds um, and the challenge. Uh, that the family would have had, but the challenge that Priya would have had um, juggling the expectations of her family. So 
Uh, I think that there's a message in there. There's a there's a beautiful when you see it in a moment, you'll see the sort of textile backdrop, which almost looks slightly ancient. Um, it's perhaps it's a relic from Sri Lanka, and then a very contemporary sort of clothing that she wears, sort of black and white corporate looking shirt that's not tucked in. You just want to go up and tuck her shirt in for her. <laughs> very very natural, and uh, you know she's she. It suggests that it's someone who's really hardworking and is very honest with her appearance and it's a strong portrait and I was just taken by it so much. It, it really, really captured her and I feel like I almost sort of engaged with her in a sense. You could almost talk to her. Um, and in terms of its um, detail, it's just the right amount of colour, the right amount of light, the, the, the detail's great and, you know, everything is working and for me it, it's definitely the winning portrait in this show. Oh, Let's thank have you so much. <laughs> Let's have a look at it. Cameron and Karen will come back to you in just a moment, but I think it's important that we have a look at the winner at this point in time. Let's go back to the Beaker Valley Regional Gallery with Mayor Sharon Tapscott and Gallery Director Ian Dawson. Ian, I'm going to put you on the big screen. Can you give us a sense, give us a look at this winning portrait and I guess give us your own reflection? Um, well, yeah, look, we're sitting right in front of it, Ian, and uh, the Mayor and I were just, uh, through your announcement, admiring it. There's not much to add to Karen's statement. I think she really kind of captured what the strength of this portrait is. Um, I'm thrilled that it's going to a young artist uh, who I think this kind of prize can make a difference to their career. It's a beautiful work and it, it has jumped out at the people that are here with us in the gallery today as well. So congratulations, Cameron, and we're thrilled to uh, have you as our winner in 2020. Let's hear from the man himself and bring Karen back into the conversation. Cameron, how do you feel? I know that's a really stupid question, but how are you feeling? I, yeah, I am gobsmacked. Um, obviously, I... I thought that I was um, being brought on with a, with a couple of other artists being the WA representative. So We tricked you. You got me cool. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I am honestly so incredibly flattered. This portrait means so much to me and I have never put so much into a piece um, in my life and even the the subject um being you know someone i work with but someone i i have so much respect for and you know honestly put put her on a, a bit of a pedestal in terms of what she's been through what she continues to go through and the amount of strength that she has um yeah i i could not be happier right now um it it feels like I, yeah, it feels like this piece is now um, completed, so to speak, because um, I, I really felt as though her story um, needed to be known. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit more about this lady and, and your friendship with her. You've been friends yeah. for three years, I think. She comes from a Sri Lankan background. When I look at the portrait, there's great strength, great confidence. She's, she's out mm -hmm. there right at the front of your, your portrait. Uh, she's yeah. not hiding in the background at, at all. Where mm -hmm. does this strength come, come from? What's her story? So, yeah, she, she was born in Australia, but her parents um, fled northern Sri Lanka um, in a town called Jaffna. Um, and they are part of the, the Tamil region, which is the minority in Sri Lanka. So they had to flee because of civil unrest in the country um, where there was essentially a civil war. Um, and in order to provide for their family, um, they had to fly, fly out and, and make a new home in, in Australia. So when um, Priya was born, you know, just like, um, many uh, people who are in, you know, two different cultures. She had almost like a family life and and a, a social life and, and a life out, outside of home. Um, and I think for her, a lot of her strength has come from having to deal with two very different cultures. Um, and, sorry, people at work trying to open the door. Um, <laughs> 
trying to um, navigate through two different cultures. Um, and on top of that, unfortunately, Priya's um, mother um, got diagnosed with um, very bad schizophrenia when she was very young. Um, and her and her brother actually ended up purchasing a house for the, the family of four to live in um, so that the dad could quit his job to become um, her mum's full-time carer. Um, and, you know, when I asked her about it, um, you know, I was like, oh, is it, is it culturally typical for, you know, the kids to purchase the house for the parents like that? You know, I, I had no idea and she, she kind of explained, oh, no, it's, it's because of this situation. And just, you know, for, for her, she doesn't flaunt any of, any of that. She just focuses on herself um, and uh, pulling back to the cultural differences. Um, her father is very traditional um, in, you know, his Hindu background and Hindu beliefs. And I think um, a lot of Priya's confidence is almost... Um, to not to spite him, but to, you know, to make herself her own person and to stand proud. So, you know, she'll, she'll dye her hair grey, she'll have the nose rings, she'll wear almost these male-like clothing um, to just just set herself apart. And, um, yeah, it, it's a combination of all these things that um, brought me incredible admiration for her as a person and I just needed to paint her, and um, she obviously said, "Yeah, um, I'm I'm happy for you to paint me." And um, we we started the process, and I have never been so happy with how um, well I've been able to represent someone or or their story. Um, so, yeah, I'm very very happy with it. Thank you for introducing us to your friend. There are many in the Bega Valley. Yeah. They're all clapping next door. <laughs> there are many in the Bega Valley who are going to meet this amazing woman. And indeed, the Shirley Hannon pulls people from, from far afield, from the ACT, from East Gippsland, from the Illawarra, from the Shoalhaven. People come to the Bega Valley for the Shirley Hannon and they're going to meet your friend, Pira, which is, which is just great. Um, Cameron, tell us a bit about you. Ian mentioned you're an emerging artist and you've mentioned a couple of times that you're speaking to us from, from work. What's your day job? Um, I'm a physiotherapist by day in a busy private practice in, inside a shopping centre. Um, and, yeah, I've, I've been painting for about four years now, but my love for art has been since I was very young. I've always drawn and I always loved realism. Um, but yeah, I, I essentially started with acrylics four years ago after seeing my auntie who does a bit of painting and I got super inspired by her and then I just kept going and I kind of applied for a, a couple of little competitions here and there and didn't get in but kept getting asked by friends and family to do little paintings for them and then I kind of got sick of that and I wanted to paint for myself and then I started bringing on kind of bigger projects for me and um, that kind of pushed me into portraiture which I just found in incredibly rewarding and exciting and um, and yeah a bit different so yeah this is obviously a, a very big deal for me. You are the first physiotherapist to win the Shirley Hannah National Portrait <laughs> Award. Congratulations you've done great things for the um, the career of physiotherapists, the, the, we think much more of them now. Yeah. Uh, what does this mean for your arts practice, do you think? Have you, I guess, walked in these shoes and thought, what if I win the Shirley Hannon? What can I do with that? Um, I'm not really sure. I think for me that I, I have kind of come to the realisation that for my art practice, I... I need it as an escape from my day job. I don't think I could have it as my job. Um, and I think what gives me the appreciation of doing it is craving and searching for the time outside of work to um, dedicate to artwork. And yeah, I, you know, obviously getting getting into this award, I was like, I've made it. Um, that's so good. I'm so excited. but. By the same means, I am so happy with where it sits in my life. So 
to be honest, I, I don't think it will change anything because I just love doing it and I, and I love um, putting, you know, pieces into competitions and I've, and I've really started enjoying getting to meet more of the art community and um, be able to connect with fellow artists. Um, and actually, Todd Simpson, who was a previous entrant, um, he contacted me on Instagram and, and said, oh, you should put that piece into the Shirley Hannon. And I was like, oh, cool. I'd, I'd seen the competition. I'd seen previous works. But um, it, it's connections like that that are actually what I'm, what I'm all about and what I'm striving for with my painting. So, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping it'll, it'll bring more of that, which, you know, I'm, I'm sure it will. Karen, there's something really lovely about Cameron's sentiment there when he talks about this passion he has for art and the thirst he has for creating that time in his life to take up his art uh, practice. And indeed, I think there's something about portraiture that has something similar within the Australian community. Australians seem to really identify with portraiture and really click and connect with it, perhaps in a similar way that, that Cameron does. I think it is about, you know, capturing what it, the face of Australia in lots of ways. And, and this portrait looks at a first generation Australian and, and points to those challenges that are involved in, in being, you know, in that position. And that speaks to a vast proportion of our community. So it's celebrating, in a sense, the rich diversity of our country. And I think that's that's what we're on about at the Portrait Gallery. We, we really want to capture that. It's about the identity of this place. Um, what I love about this portrait and your story is that you really got, to, you, you know your sitter so well. And for me, it's often that relationship between the artist and the sitter that is just so critical. Uh, in terms of you know there being that chemistry and you can you can sort of see that in the portrait so the explanation sits well alongside the work and you know another big tick for you Cameron um, you know you've just done a terrific job. Oh, thank you so much I really appreciate it. Karen what were some of the other portraits that caught your eye that gave Cameron and and Priya a run for their money? Yeah, um, there's one called <laughs> Composing by, uh, it's a portrait of Carl Wein by Matteo Ber Berlusconi. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful um, portrait but it, and it has an incomplete, um, I haven't got it in front of me, but an incomplete, um, the painting is incomplete in terms of the body and so the face just sits there very strongly and it, it's, it's really beautifully ex ex executed. Uh, the other one that I thought is worth mentioning is Elegance 2 by Dagmar Cirilla um, of Kim Ellery, um, which is, uh, again, another fabulous portrait. And Narelle Zeller did a great piece uh, called Listen, uh, which is a young person with a, a phone, I think, um, and it just captures the spirit of adolescence and how they we're so preoccupied with technology and I thought that was a terrific work as well. So they came close, but Cameron, you, you, you shone, and so there can only be one winner. Congratulations to Cameron and our 38 finalists. <laughs> yeah, with your drink of water in, in Canberra. Karen, before we let you go, let's let's get a plug in for the National Portrait Gallery. Where are you guys up to in these crazy days of COVID-19? Can people visit the gallery at the moment? Yes, yes, people can visit. Um, we are obviously adhering to all of the the regulations around the health the the what has been stipulated so um there are small limitations but apart from that we're open we have the darling portrait prize uh extended um and we also have the national photographic portrait prize on at the same time so they're on for a while and it, it's it's not terribly busy but it's it's good to have the doors open i have to say um at the moment <laughs> and uh yeah very much welcome people to come and visit um, if I can. <laughs> Karen, thank you so much for being our judge in 2020 and adding your your weight in the national artistic community to, to our Shirley Hannah National Portrait Award. Thank you for your time and your, your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Karen Quinlan, who's the director of the National Portrait Gallery in Canberra, our judge in 2020. Cameron, I reckon you can have the rest of the, the day off. Have you got any more appointments? Uh, I think I've got seven, so, yeah.
<laughs> I'll try. I'll try to contain myself for, for those. I reckon you can probably up your rate now. Yeah, an, an award-winning physiotherapist. Just don't tell them it's for art. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think Cameron, it's like, we wish you well. It. We'd love, love to see you in the Bega Valley sometime soon. You're, you're coming oh. to us from Perth at the moment. The border is closed, but yeah. when it's open again, when life gets back to normal, you'd be very welcome here in the Bega Valley and we'll toast you once again. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much, Ian. Really appreciate it. Take care, mate. See ya. Cameron Richards, the winner of the 2020 Shirley Hannon National Portrait Award. Ian Dawson, Sharon Tapscott. Hey, what a lovely fella. We found a great winner there. Yeah, look, I'm thrilled that uh, Cameron could join us and I'm thrilled we caught uh, his absolute surprise and joy uh, live for our audience as well. I just want to thank everyone for joining us this evening and thank the Mayor for taking the time out of her busy schedule and, and yourself, Ian. I also want to kind of take this opportunity to thank my incredible team here at the Bega Valley Regional Gallery and in particular the volunteer that helped us a lot in the setting up of this show, Flynn Sheedy. He gave a lot of time to us this week. I um, also want to thank my incredible bosses, uh, Alice Howe and Anne Cleverly, who've been really supportive of what we do here at the Bega Valley Regional Gallery and instrumental in kind of getting us to this stage. And so I'm really excited to progress it further over the next couple of years. And thank you to you, Ian, for always bringing something rich to our life here in the Bega Valley. Thank you so much. Cheers. Ian Dawson, the director of the Bega Valley Regional Gallery and Bega Valley Mayor Sharon Tapscott. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, this special live stream, kickstarting the 2020 Shirley Hannon National Portrait Award. In two years' time, I have no doubt that we'll be back in the gallery, shoulder to shoulder, sipping on champagne and, and arguing about the winner again. And I look forward to, to doing that with you in two years' time when our Life returns to normal post-COVID-19. You can explore the 2020 Shirley Hannon National Portrait Award a couple of ways. You can head to the Bega Valley Regional Gallery website right now and take the virtual tour, or you can come in and take a look for yourself within the COVID safe guidelines, of course. The gallery is open tomorrow, Saturday, the 25th of July from 10 till 4, and then every day, Monday to Saturday from 10 till 4 through until the 11th of September. Thanks so much for tuning in and being part of this special event again. Once again, the Shirley Hannon brings the Bega Valley together, connects us to the broader Australian community. Thank you so much. Take care, look after yourself, and we'll talk again soon. Ta-da.